remember we're creating margins in our lives. And this week we're looking at opportunities. Who would have thought that opportunity is an invitation from God to, for us to create, to make room in our lives to be who he wants us to be? Who would have thought so? But today I want to show you further. I, I believe that yesterday we had a fantastic time just looking at what opportunity was about. This morning I want you to go with me to Luke chapter 9. Let's begin by opening to Luke chapter 19, verse 11 to 14. Luke 19, 11 to 14. Part of what we talked about yesterday, we actually really focused on the definition of opportunity. But today I want us to look at something I've called call and response. I want you to see that the power in an opportunity is in how you respond to it. So in Luke 19, verse 11 to 14, it says, and as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, see, I can, I can preach a series on, and they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Maybe I should actually preach a series on that. But that's not where we are today. He said, therefore, a nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. If I were you, I would put that, I would underline the word to receive himself a kingdom, but more importantly, circle the word to return and to return. And he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. I want you to underline or circle, occupy till I come as well. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. An opportunity is only as good as how we respond to it. It is wisdom to recognize an opportunity, that an opportunity is just another thing until you proactively respond to it. The power of your opportunity is in your response. Whatever opportunity the God of heaven brings your way, there is a day to render an account. Whether he brought you into the presence of a man or he put money in your hands or he brought you to a position of power or he gave you the opportunity of parenting, whatever opportunity God gives to you, there is a day where we would render account. And in rendering account, what God would ask is, what did you do with that which I put in your hands? Whether he planted you in a particular neighborhood or he put you in a particular congregation, it will be required of us to render an account what we did with that chance or that opportunity. Yesterday, I told us that time and chance happen to everybody. So there's not one person here who would say to me, they don't have opportunities. The reason why you think you don't have opportunities is because you think opportunities look a certain way. And when you see that opportunity doesn't look the way you think it should look, you begin to think that you don't have opportunities. As we saw in the scripture above that we just read in Luke 19, the men were presented a unique opportunity. Their master was going away to receive a kingdom and to return. And he said to them, do business till I come. Do business till I come. Occupy till I, I come. He says, they said, but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to rake over us. They saw an opportunity, they refused to embrace it. And where, you know, the, 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 the power in this scripture is in that place where they said they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. The Jews always thought that when they talked, that when, they, when they were told that they would have a Messiah, Messiah, they thought that the Messiah I alluded to it yesterday. We come, you know, sitting on the throne, you know, would have very uh, great military strength, and he would just um, level every other nation that antagonized them, and then they will become a superpower on earth. So they did not recon or bargain for a, a boy or a child who was born in a manger. 
They did not reckon or expect that their king of kings would be wearing a crown of thorns. Those things did not make sense. They did not think that their own savior would be trekking, that their Messiah would be limited just the way they were limited, that their Messiah would shed tears, he would weep at some point, that their Messiah would be angry at, at them. So they looked at it and they didn't understand the coming of Jesus Christ. And that because that was the really parable was about that. But if we take it and we put it in our present day condition, when God calls a man and gives him brings a man to an opportunity, opportunities don't look like what we think. A lot of us think opportunity will be wrapped up in dollar and pounds and euro notes. Uh uh, that's not how opportunity shows up. Opportunity always shows up as a stretch, as work, as things you have to do. But I go ahead of myself. As we saw in the scripture, Jesus views the opportunity he sends our ways as chances to ensure we turn a profit for the expansion of the kingdom, the establishment of the government of God in the earth, and of course for our benefit. Opportunities require conversion to become resources and then they become profit. There is a great power in responding to opportunities with a posture that announces that we have something to give before we begin to receive. People, a lot of people think opportunity means take, receive, but real opportunity will require you to give first. That's why before you make big money, you have to make risky investments. <laughs> Let me go on. The power of your opportunity is in your response. If we go back to Luke 19, the nobleman was going to go into their kingdom was an opportunity for those men to step up to a new level of living that they probably had never experienced before. Instead, they resisted what God has sent them, even without giving themselves the time to understand what it was that was at stake. If the power of an opportunity is in your response, the potency, uh, if the power of an opportunity is in your, res in its, in your response, the test of opportunity is understanding the potency of the moment. You must, because sometimes you say, okay, I didn't respond properly. This is with benefit of hindsight. I did not respond properly to that opportunity because I did not understand it. When we get to the table of regrets, that's what we say. But I'm saying to you now that, you know, that's why the Bible says, get wisdom and in all you're getting, get understanding. I have learned as I have grown, that is after missing tons of opportunities. I have now arrived at the wisdom that lets me know that the response, the, the initial response to any opportunity for me should never be no that the best response is to say, give me time to figure it out or give me time to think on it, to get into a room and do my best to understand what the opportunity means. Does this make sense? So the test of opportunity is understanding. That's where the potency of an opportunity can be drawn. If you do not understand the dynamics of an opportunity, it will always look different from how we think opportunities should look. Does that make sense? Now, I, I did a bit of a research yesterday and I just focused on Apple. And I want to show you two examples. There was a guy called Nola Bonnell. And when Apple was going to float the first time, they asked him, they offered him Apple shares for 50K USD dollars, United States dollars. They asked him to invest $50,000 in the opportunity of Apple. And he passed it up. He refused. He didn't understand that technology was the future. And he said no, that he wasn't going to invest. If that man had invested $50,000 in, um, in Apple, today, those shares would have been worth, would be, would be worth at least $480 billion if he had invested for 50, uh, 50K. He, uh, today, at least, those shares would have been worth $480 billion. 
There was another guy called Ronald Wayne. I think he walked in with, initially he walked with Apple at the initial stage and he had 10% shares. Do you know how much he sold his 10% shares for? He sold his 10% shares for Apple. The moment Apple started and someone said, I wanted shares, he sold his 10% shares for $800. And then he showed he, he sold every right to everything Apple that he had for one thousand five hundred dollars. So he had ten percent of Apple shares then, and 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 he had some rights, maybe you know, to to be a voice within Apple. And he sold everything from two thousand three hundred dollars. Guess what? If he had kept his ten percent. Those 10% will be worth at least $40 billion today. Now, I'm using these ones because research have, you know, um, we, we have research that have shown what these men walked away from because they did not understand opportunity. Now, let me tell you that you, if you will be sober today and do the work of thinking through things you walked away from in the lifetime of an opportunity and you did not embrace it. You may not have walked away as it were today, $40 billion, but you've walked away from many things. We reason why believers especially, who are meant to be the wealthiest because we are covenant people and not the wealthiest, is because we don't seek to understand Ah, we don't seek to understand opportunities. We look at everything through the filter of um, in do, 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 do they carry Bible? The moment you look at it, look at it, there's no Bible involved. You walk away from it. Does that make sense? Opportunity. You can never fully figure out opportunity by its reputation. You must make the effort to understand opportunity for it to yield anything to you. The people who were given money in March 25 were told to do business. The master was going to come back. The one who received five talents, the five talent man went to work. The two talent man went to work. The one talent man looked at it and said, I'm afraid of my ogre. If I do it and I don't do much with it now, he will come and will be angry. He went and he buried it. A lot of us have buried opportunities when we should have taken them. A lot of us, how did... Coach Anna become my coach and my sister and my friend for the rest of our lives. I went to a bookstore in um, in Ikeja and I saw her book, Woman Act Now. And that had a big smile in front of it and I just felt pulled to it. So I picked it up. As I was reading, I was researching her. Then I stumbled and, and, and in the pages of the book that she ran something even called Woman Act Now. And then I went online to look for her. It wasn't even like today that every information is at your fingertip. But I found her. And I sent an email. And like they say, the rest is history. I sent her an email in December. And in July of the next year, she was in my house in Lagos opportunities i need that contact shaking if it was today i probably would not be that um, um unsure of myself but i knew something was pulling me in that moment this is an opportunity do not miss it this is an opportunity do not miss it i must have bought 250 copies of that book within three months i gave to everyone i knew I'm sure some people did not open that a page of that book because it was a gift, but it was a ton of opportunity for me. I saw it and, and I took it. I wish that I had taken every other opportunity the way I grabbed that one with my two hands. Opportunities. I indeed check at divine moments and we need to learn to embrace them. The first time I taught on the subject of matter of opportunity, I began with the expression, opportunity will always show up in work clothes. 
As a matter of fact, I'm going to do homecoming for March. I'm going to dwell on opportunity. I'm going to come at it from another angle. Not, you know, I'm not, yes, scripture, but I'm going to make it a masterclass. I know, and you know, I, I, many years ago when I started to teach on opportunity, the first thing I would say is that opportunity always turned up uh, in work clothes. Opportunity will always show up in work clothes. And many have turned away opportunities because of his reputation or what they thought was his peculiar configuration in the moment. We had no clue what it had because we're not patient enough to dig into it and find out what was inside we saw what it looked like on the outside and we concluded that it was going to be hard to pursue we concluded that it was not meant for people like us we concluded that we concluded that we concluded that we concluded that and we walked away from opportunities the bible in proverbs 25 says the purpose in a man's heart is like deep water but a man of understanding will draw it out a man of understanding will draw it out. A lot of us, let me tell you what understanding will do for you. Understanding will unveil for you the potential of an opportunity. Let me say that again. It just occurred to me. That's why I'm writing. Understanding will unveil for to you, or unveil for you, unveil to you the potential of an opportunity. This is a master class all by itself. Because it's CYM now, some of us will still not pay attention. So recognizing opportunity is critical. The question is, how do you recognize opportunity? Opportunities will manifest in three dominant ways. Pay attention to me. I'll repeat this during the whole homecoming and I will expand on it. But pay attention to me this early money. Opportunities will manifest as chaos, circumstances, and calling. Chaos, circumstances, are calling. A lot of us want the calling part of opportunity, especially if the calling part involves a microphone and standing in front of people. We rejoice at that, even if it was a figment of our imagination. That's the one we dance at. A lot of us do not want to see the opportunity in chaos. A lot of us have no clue the opportunities in our circumstance. Every circumstance has a flip side. At this point, on this side, it may look like a disadvantage. If you are able to flip it properly, on the other side is always a benefit. Opportunity. Opportunity presents as chaos, circumstances, and calling. Chaos. Genesis chapter one. In the beginning was let's let's let's. <laughs> hey, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Let me not try and quote it because some people will say I did not quote it from the Bible because they've never taken the opportunity of opening their Bible by themselves. So let me read it. And if you are there, please help me put Genesis chapter one verse one and two. Let me copy it and paste it in the comments. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The beginning, God saw chaos. The earth was without form and void. Chaos was the beginning of you and me. Have you ever seen sperm in a petri dish before? You and me, the beginning of us was chaos. So, if God saw the word that it was without form and void, the earth was without form and void, <coughs> and darkness was on the face of the deep, and he released his spirit, it meant to me, Now God saw an opportunity for better and he took it. Every great thing you will do, even when you close your eyes and you see the final product and you are excited about the final product, when you open your eyes, it is messy. A lot of us run away 
from the mess because <coughs> we do not understand that the mess is the first part of the message. We see it as a test and we run away because we do not embrace the fact that the test is the first part of a testimony. Opportunities will, would present itself chaos, circumstances, and calling. If you attend homecoming, I will break it down for you. When I looked at the accounts that were recorded in Matthew 25, the entire Matthew 25 is a chapter on opportunities. From the, ten, the parable of the five virg the ten uh, virgins to the talents, every parable that was recorded in Matthew 25, and if you read Matthew 25 before, it's a long chapter. Every single one of that thing, a uh, uh, conversation that Jesus had in Matthew 25 was about opportunity. It was about opportunity. If your marriage will be great, it will be first be messy. If your children will do well, they will first mess many things up. And this is a shout out to parents who entrust their children to me. I was talking to one of my daughters yesterday because she's now become my daughters because her mother entrusted her to me and she's going to turn 23. And I said to her, you are still allowed to make mistakes. You are still allowed to explore. You are still allowed not to have a clue at 23. Don't beat yourself up over what you are yet to understand. Every greatness will begin with a mess. People who have no clue. People who have to figure things out. Why do you think that that's why every great gadget today first went through what they call the better phase? That is the better testing phase where they bring the thing out and they put it in a room and they test it. Why do you think that testing uh, pharmaceuticals have testing seasons where they take new drugs and they look for people, they pay people to test the drugs on them because they could have thought that the drug would do X, Y, Z and it ends up not delivering on that thing. So they pay people and they say, do you want to be that person who would come and would test the medication on you because you have a particular amen? Because every great thing is born out of chaos, circumstances and calling. But believers like calling, and God called me, theology. As in fact, that word, I'm going to borrow it. Ah, God called me. We like the calling bit. But have you taken it, a look at your life when he called you? I know what my life looks like when he called me. I Yes, clinical trials. Thank you. See the people that went to school keep giving, are giving me the right words. Do you, do you understand that? Do you understand? I know what I was like when God called me. I know what my life looks like. I know what my life looks like today, even within this call. Every single day is a cleaning out of the mess that Bidemi is. Every single day is a further cleaning out of the mess that Bidemi is. But with every single day, the Bible says it like this, the path of the righteous as a shining light, shined brighter and brighter onto a perfect day. As long as I continue to show up and embrace this thing that God has called me to, it will begin to look more and more like what it was supposed to be. We had a meeting on Sunday and we were making a plans Tiny the well was making certain plans and people were, you know, I'm sure they would think, are you crazy, this girl? I'm not. I'm just embracing the opportunity that God has brought my way in the many ways that I can. I will extend myself until there's nothing to extend anymore. Because if there is any greatness in it, if there is any potential in it, if there is any wealth in it, if there's any impact in it, if there is anything that will glorify God in it, I will, I will, I will squeeze it out. That's how we should embrace opportunities. But do you recognize it when it shows up? Because if you don't recognize it, you won't know. A lot of people have walked away from relationships because they made them uncomfortable. Oh my God, I'll never forget. In 2012, January of 2012, I was in South Africa with my coach, Mama Linda, and my sister, Audrey. And my coach was annoyingly disturbing. 
she would just what well, she just puts something in front of me and she said be the me don't think about it just sing don't sing a song you've ever heard before just take a deep breath and think sing something you've never heard before i'm like huh coach i can't i don't even like to hear myself sing not let alone to want to sing a song i've never heard before she said to me just she said go to zero that's how she would say it she said go to zero now breathe in take a deep breath exhale and then just open your mouth close your eyes and sing what you hear eh? it was too disruptive for me because the first time she said it to me the second time the third time the fourth time i kept thinking to myself oh my god i'm going to open my mouth and i'm going to speak nonsense i'm going to sing nonsense the the words will not make sense you know i i kept thinking how it will sound and because of that first time second time third time fourth time of course i would open my eyes after a minute and say coach i can't do it and she'll be like no you can do it eventually one day because we we're there for about i think about 10 days or 12 days i don't remember one day in that time one morning we we're seated by the pool and she thrust that thing in front of me again and she said you can do it i know you can do it it's in you and i closed my eyes and i started to sing and by the time i opened my eyes everybody had tears in their eyes I can't remember the song who maybe my coach still has it because she has a tendency for recording everything but i closed my eyes and i actually just allowed myself to go deep in and the song that came out everybody in front when i opened my eyes and i looked at them they had tears in their eyes because it was not just a stringing of words if i remember it was a song of you know the deep worship and hope opportunities that was the day i realized that i could write songs and i had written i've written only one song in my life that has been done but it was a pretty powerful song the point i'm making my brothers and sisters is you can never tell how far god can take you unless you embrace what you don't quite understand a hundred percent seek to understand it so even when i talk about understanding you may not understand it a hundred percent i promise you that one talent man didn't buried his talent because he had no understanding the potential that was in it the man that had five went to town the bible said he declared five more talents as his prophet i have read that scripture many times and what i realized is that it was what he said he made that the boss agreed he made so it was possible he made seven more talents well he said oh i made five more and his boss was glad he made five more here's the point every time you or embrace an opportunity properly and you give it all your all and you work it the margins you create in your life first of all make your own life easy before they touch anyone else you are the one that comes into ease first and foremost before anybody else so believers need to invest a bit more we have too afraid of investments believers need to invest a bit more when you have one person in your congregation who embraces the risk of investment because remember i talked to you about risk yesterday what do we do we usually think that just because we we can't we do not understand what he's doing we think that he's doing something illegal opportunity Today, I want you to spend two seconds and recall those opportunities that you did not embrace and feel ashamed for yourself today. You are allowed to just feel ashamed for yourself this morning and make a commitment that next time, before I turn an opportunity away, I will seek to understand it. Don't shut things down because you don't understand them. Don't shut things down, you know, on a whim because you, they don't look like what you are used to. Always seek to understand. Nugo, you hear me? Do you, do you understand? If you're on this prayer call and you're yet to give your life to Jesus, please give your life to Jesus. Yesterday I told us that the greatest opportunity 
that mankind has ever encountered was the opportunity of Jesus Christ, the gift of the Son of God. So this morning, if you're yet to give your life to Jesus, give your life to Jesus. How do you do that? Pray with me and say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. 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 For the rest of us, bring out your communion. Let's just repent of the many things we walked away from because we did not know what to do. Let's repent of all that foolishness and ask God to give us another chance. Father Lord, by this communion this morning, we contend for another chance. You are the God of, a, of second chances. Father, in the name of Jesus, we contend for another chance. Help us, O oh God, to grab that which is in the room in this season so that we can create financial margins, relational margins, you know, um, impact margins, visionary margins in our lives and so much more in the name of Jesus. As we eat in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, and the name of God the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for joining the prayer call. If Jesus tarries, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Remember today, don't say no until you understand why no is the right answer. God bless you. You are loved and appreciated. Bye-bye.